Well, I don't know whether this is actually going to record and save so I can upload it. I hope it does. Um, I'm uploading this video uh, because I watched uh, a video from Frank Turek, who is a excellent, in my opinion, uh, Christian apologist. And um, I think he's missing the mark and getting it wrong uh, with people. Um, and I want to bring out kind of what he said. Uh, it was just a short little clip that I watched, but he was basically saying that, look, uh, some lady asks uh, about the homosexual agenda, and what do you tell your kids, and, you know, about that, and whatnot. And he said, look, you know, he turn, turned them to... to uh, 1 Corinthians, where Paul was talking about the people that would not inherit the kingdom of God, neither fornicators, nor adulterers, nor, nor covetous persons, and this and that, shall in, inherit the kingdom of God. And then he went on and said, it, but it co goes on to say, and such were some of you, but you have been washed, but you have been sanctified, but you have been justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and by the Spirit of our God. So these people that were doing these things, um, that were not going to inherit the kingdom of God, they were not washed. They were not justified. They were not um, um, uh, sanctified in the name of the Lord and by the Spirit of our God. And he says that if you're a Christian, uh, you will still sin, but you're not going to want to sin. And um, that's just absolutely not true. That doesn't line up with our human experience. No Christian's human experience. In fact, uh, we are going to want to sin in our flesh because our flesh is full of its own desires, uh, independent of, of being born again. It's important to understand that when we became born again, and I think that uh, Ralph uh, Arnold, a Yankee, a grace preacher, has it right. He said that when you're born again, uh, your spirit man is born again. Uh, you are made a new creature and made alive in Christ uh, in the spirit. But God did nothing with your flesh. Your flesh is still going to sin until the day you die. Uh, it is corrupt. It is part of Adam's uh, seed. We have not inherited uh, our glorified bodies yet. And that's why the Bible says uh, that it does not yet appear what we shall be, but when he appears, we shall be like him. In other words, perfect uh, in mind, body, and spirit. But this old man's been around for a long time, and I've been in church uh, for a long time, and I've seen uh, through my own experience, and as well as observation with my fellow Christian brothers and sisters, people sin all the time uh, and he went on to say that you know if 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 you're really born again you're not going to want to commit sin although we will still sin what he fails to realize is the Bible says that if you keep the whole law and yet you offend in a single point you are guilty of all it also tells us that we are not justified by the works of the law but we are justified freely by His grace through faith in Christ Jesus. So it is faith. So he went on to say, so if you advocate those sins, and I don't think you should advocate any sin, uh, I do agree that you know you shouldn't be advocating your sin. You should know inside of your in, internally inside of yourself that certain behaviors that your flesh wants to manifest are sinful and they should be resisted. But it has nothing to do with your salvation. And he says that you, the Bible says you can't be a Christian and, and uh, be caught up in those things. Uh, but that's absolutely false. Yes, you can. Um, uh, there are, you just, you're going to sin until the day you die, folks. Flat out. You don't have to listen to this old man. Uh, maybe I'm just a foolish old man, don't know much of anything. But I can tell you what, um, 
I have never, I have yet to see, meet anybody who doesn't sin. And again, if you repent of your sins, you're, tell, you're basically attempting to keep the law, and there's nothing wrong with trying to live an upright moral life. But if you are looking to those things as proof of salvation, as, uh, or to get saved, or to stay saved, you're still not saved because you're not trusting on the payment God made for your sins on the cross. Jesus is God who came into this world as a man. He went to a cross after setting a perfect example of the way God intended man to be. And then he bled and he died as payment in his court for all of your sins. And the moment you trust on that payment, truly trust on that payment, and enter his rest by ceasing to try to be justified in yourself on any level, but simply resting on what Christ did on that cross and, and coming to a place where you understand that that is enough, that he actually accomplished what he set out to accomplish. He purged you in God's court of every sin. The moment you believe that, you are saved, sanctified, and sealed, and justified forever. There's no such thing as progressive sanctification. The moment you believe you're sanctified, you are justified, and uh, God accounts that to you for righteousness. Not your righteousness, His righteousness. But you're trusting on His righteousness, not your own, to get you into heaven. And so the moment you believe, you are justified. Uh, but to say that people who are caught up in any sin, I don't care what it is, all sin is an abomination in God's eyes. Even a little tiny little lie is enough to get you headlong right into hell. And it only takes one sin to get you there. And we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And there's not a just man upon the earth that doeth good and sinneth not, the scriptures say. So therefore, um, Stop looking to yourselves, folks, and start looking to Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith. Um, and understand that the only people who are still adulterers and fornicators and, and covetous people that, and all these other different people and drunkards and whatnot that will not inherit the kingdom of God are those who do not trust that Jesus paid their fine. They're not trusting on the payment. And therefore they stand condemned because they have they do not have God's righteousness that God imputes by faith. So you're not going to get away from sin, folks. Stop looking to yourself. Stop wondering, oh, did I blow it this time? Look, when God called you to himself, he called you with foreknowledge with complete and total understanding of everything about you from beginning of your life to the very end of your life and he called you anyway irrespective of your sins and therefore uh, he saves you completely past, present and future sins have already been forgiven when God called you to himself and saved you from your sins he was already aware of your future sins too he was aware of all the sins you'd ever commit in your entire existence, your entire life. And so, when he saved you, he saved you with that total knowledge. And he saved you anyway. So, you just need to rest on the payment, folks. And that's how you are, in fact, born again. Uh, and once you are born again, it's forever. God never takes it back. The gifts and callings of God are without repentance. You are, sale, you are sanctified, sealed, and, and you are in his hands forever. And no matter what you do, now you might come under his chastisement if you live an ungodly life before, you know, in this world. Uh, but God, the Bible says that God uh, chastises or, or chastens every son that comes to him. So that's to be expected. Nonetheless, at the very at at the very end of the game, God still has you if you have trusted on His payment. Salvation is a free gift, and you receive it the moment you believe that you 
have it because he paid for it. And I'm just going to leave it at that. Think about it. Think about it deeply. Does God fail? Can God not see your future? And does he not know every step you'll ever take in your entire life? And would he, if he wasn't going to save you, would he, because of a particular sin, would he bother even doing it? Uh, knowing your every move from the beginning of your, the first breath you took to the very last you'll take? No, he doesn't. He's not, he's not that kind of a God. He saved you and called you to himself uh, because he wanted to save you. And he saved you in spite of yourself with full knowledge of all your sins, past, present, and future. And your flesh will sin. He did nothing to do, he did nothing to your flesh the moment you were born again. Your flesh is still in Adam's seed. He created a, a new man in Christ Jesus that cannot sin because his seed remains in him and he cannot sin. But your flesh sins all the time, folks, and it will until Two, one of two things happen. Either Jesus returns and then we will be like him because we will see him as he is or you will die and shed this sinful flesh and then the real you created in Christ Jesus will manifest itself fully, completely and clearly. Anyway, that's all I have to say. You have a blessed day and a blessed week.